Lithium iron phosphate versus lithium ion freezer test. Here we go. In this video, I took a couple popular ice fishing batteries, a lithium iron phosphate and a lithium ion. I did five tests on each battery at room temperature and at 20 degrees to see what effect the cold had on the batteries. So if you're not an ice fisherman, these are made by a company called Markham and they mainly make fish finders up until a couple years ago when they got in the battery game. And the reason I'm testing these two is because they're si they have similar amp hour rating. You know, this is a 10, this is a 12, uh, but they're made by the same company. One thing that I do want to point out is the Markham fish finders, and I actually own one. This is called an LX7. In the instruction book here for the LX7, you can see the Markham digital sonar needs 11 volts, preferably 12 volts to properly operate. So on each one of these tests, I put a note on the graph to show where that 11 volt mark was. And as you can see, this is the instruction book for the LX7. This is probably their flagship fish finder. So our first test here is on the lithium iron phosphate, the Markham Brute 10 amp hour. This is 70 degrees charge, 70 degrees discharge. All these temperatures are in Fahrenheit. So right here, you can see that's our 11 volt mark. So right as it's hitting that 11 volt mark, it drops out pretty much what we expect to see. This battery tested at 11.7 amp hours, which is great considering it is a 10 amp hour battery. So let's check out number two, test two, which is the force, the lithium ion. This is room temperature, 70 degrees charge, 70 degrees discharge. And right here is our 11 volt mark. And I, I've brought this up in, in other videos as well. These batteries, this these lithium ion, ion batteries, the nominal voltage on these is 11.1 volts. And in my opinion, it's just not enough voltage for our modern day electronics, such as the fish finders, this company that made this battery uh, sells. Now I will say this battery, the Markham Force, you can only pick this up at Shields. Uh, it's an exclusive deal. If you're not familiar with Shields, they're a, a Midwest Cabela's type of store. Um, very popular. I like it. Been there a lot. They got lots of good stuff. Why they would sell this battery for fish finders, I don't know. I don't agree with them on that one. But uh, that's why I'm making these videos to just show you guys what I find in my test. So, test number two. Now, this is going to be a lithium iron phosphate, the Brute. This is going to be 70 degrees charge. 20 degrees discharge so it's this blue line right here look how that cold affects the lithium iron phosphate right here we hit that 11 volt mark with 9.6 amp hours basically used in that battery so when you're in cold conditions you can expect to get about 9.6 amp hours out of it uh, before you hit that 11 volt mark nothing wrong with that i think that's a, a good Good performance out of this battery. Uh, next up, the Force Lithium Ion Battery. Oh, look at this funky thing going on here. Battery discharge started doing the funky chicken towards the end here. Didn't know which way it was going to go, looks like. But look up here 11 volts. By the time we hit 5.25 amp hours, we hit that 11 volt mark. So obviously, it's come back a little bit before on this discharge curve we got. 6.3 6.4 amp hours before we hit that 11 volt mark hey guys if you haven't done it already hit that like button for me so i spent a lot of time doing these battery videos and uh the more times you hit that like button the more youtube will send these videos out the more batteries i can buy so if you like what i'm doing here support me by uh hitting that like button and subscribing okay our next test is the brute 20 and 70 so charge at 20 discharge at 70 degrees fahrenheit so this test simulates the guy up in minnesota very cold garage he's going to take his fish finder his lithium battery he's going to charge it when it's cold and these batteries do not have low temperature charging protection in them and then he's going to take that battery take it to his wheelhouse his fish house where it's nice warm and cozy and discharge it in his fish finder in his wheelhouse so that test, as you can see here, it's very similar to our control. We lost a little bit. Our 
voltage, 11 volts, we have 11.63, so very, very similar to our control where we charged it at 70 degrees. If you're new here, I actually take these batteries and tear them apart and do a whole bunch of other tests, so I'll leave a link up here. I'll also leave a link at the end of the video. Next up, same test with the force lithium ion battery. So it's this orange line right here. Look right here. This is, notice how they're all kind of clustered right here. So you see our 11 volt mark is right between the other two. Uh, 5.8 amp hours. Now one thing worth pointing out here is notice the gap right here. Notice how close the lithium iron phosphate discharge curves are when you charge it when it's freezing. Now look at the difference here between these two lithium ion batteries when you charge it when it's freezing. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing maybe you're causing more damage to the lithium ion uh, just based on this one test and that's there's a lot more testing to do on it just my initial findings I'm kind of guessing that's a reasonable uh, assumption to make I think so next up we are going to do the brute 20 degrees charge 20 degrees discharge and as you can see it's very similar to the uh, discharge curve for the 70 and 20 I actually got a little bit more a little more out of charging it and discharging it in the freezer and I, I really don't have any explanation for that the point where they dropped off right here is uh, very similar but yeah very similar as far as charging at, at room temperature and charging at at 20 degrees same test let's look at 20 and 20 on the lithium ion this one right here so this one actually did the worst out of all the lithium ion when you're charging it in 20 and you're discharging it outside in 20. that 11 volt mark is at 4.87 so you are able to use 4.87 amp hours before you hit that 11 volt mark keep in mind this is a 12 amp hour battery guys and it looks like this this 20 charge 20 discharge for this force lithium ion I did a little funky chicken like the other one I'm not I'm not really sure what to make of that 20 discharge so it looks like when these things are cold they kind of hop skip around a little bit towards the, the end of their uh, discharge curve here so if you know what's going on there let me know if you have any theories I'd like to hear them let me know down in the comments all right now our fifth and final test this is we're redoing the control test here 70 and 70 see if any there's any difference after just charging it a couple times in the freezer so first up the brute look at that pretty much right on top of our other control again actually did just a little bit better but i mean on the first control we got 11 point seven amp hours on the second control we got 11.72 amp hours so we actually got a little bit more out of it after we punched the battery a little bit um then i really don't have an explanation for that i know it's this thing has like 2000 3000 charge discharge cycles but uh if you have any guesses as to why this would perform a little bit better let me know down in the comments now i do get asked a lot what battery I recommend or what batteries I recommend and I've actually tore down uh, quite a few batteries now fish finder batteries so if you're curious which ones I recommend look at the description in this video I have a few of them listed and I always update that list so if I come across a new one I'll update that list so all the videos will be current no matter which video you watch so you want to know which which battery I recommend Go down there in the description and check them out. All right, final test. This is the force. It's this black one right here. This is the second control. And this thing is right on top. Look at that. It's right on top of our first one. I actually lost the first one. Couldn't find it there, but yeah, it's it's right on top. So doesn't appear it did much damage, but you know, who really knows? Uh, this is charge at 70, discharge at 70. And we really probably can't get a good feeling of how much this actually damaged the batteries until I do like a 50 charge discharge test, you know, 50 cycles. But really, these tests take so long. They take about a month. Uh, that would take a month to do. And 
and really I just have other videos and other battery tests to, to do so I can't really tie up my stuff for a month but if you want to see what the inside of this battery looks like click this video right here if you want some more information about this battery and others like it I made a video about those and this one down here thanks for watching guys appreciate it hit that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe I'll see you on the next one flat plateau of a discharge curve exactly what we want to see out of the lithium iron phosphate <laughs>